Hey everybody, welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Today is the exciting day of our giveaway because I want to thank you guys for getting me to 7,500 subscribers. I never imagined that I would get there in this quick of time, but you guys have been so supportive and so awesome, so I want to pay you back. So we're going to have a contest. It's going to be for a $50 Amazon gift card, which will be emailed to the winner. What you need to do to enter is make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you share this video, and make sure you leave a comment down below. Your comment can be anything from your favorite craft to maybe a fun holiday tradition, perhaps your um, favorite thing that you've learned, or you can even request another tutorial. So this is what we're going to learn today, and I'm going to show you guys up close. We're going to learn how to make the thankful porch sign. So let me give you guys a nice overview of it, and then we can get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make up a template. So what I like to do, I know how big my board is, and my board is um, 60 inches, so 5 feet by 5 and a half inches. So what I do is I open up a shape, and I choose a square, and I'm going to unlock my square. I'm going to use this little lock down here in the lower left-hand corner and click on that. And we'll go up here to the height and just change it to 60. This is going to sound insane. Don't don't freak out yet, guys. I promise. It's okay. And I'm going to change my width to 5.5. The reason I do this is it gives me a template. Obviously, this is huge. You can't see it all at once. So what I like to do is I'm going to scroll all the way down to the very bottom of my square, which is way down here. And I'm going to actually click that lock button again. What that's going to do is when I go to change my um, height so that we can actually see our entire design, it's going to keep the width even with it so that we can make our template much, much easier. So let's go ahead and just make this um, 15 inches long. It's just going to make it a lot easier for us to work with and to see it. I'm going to zoom out a little bit just so we can see better. And I'm just going to get to the top of this guy, put him up here. So we know we want to do the word thankful. So I'm going to open up a text box and I'm just going to type the letters. But what I want to show you is after each letter, I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to do this all in caps. And the reason that you put these all on different lines is so that when you have it like this, you see it's not centered. You can do the alignment and center it. And then you can move it onto your board. Oops. And you have to grab it and then move it onto your board. The reason that I do this is you can see a little bit better how it's going to look and how much space you're going to have on your board. Now I know I'm going to add a little something to the top of mine, so I'm going to leave a little extra space at the top. And don't worry, like right now, we're going to mess with the font here before we do anything else. So we're going to go into our fonts, and I'm going to use a system font. And I know I want something that is pretty, probably something that has um, a script font. So I'm just going to scroll through and just look at what my options are. Some of them are obviously not going to work. They don't look right. Um, so you can just go through and play and see what font you like. You don't have to do a script font. You could do something more like that if that was more your style. Um, you could do something maybe in this realm if that's the look you're going for. The dandelion soup is very, very, very cute. So there's a lot of options for you guys. But you just find whichever one works for you for the look that you're going for, for your style. I actually really, really like this one a lot. I think this one's really super fun and super cute. But you can see that it's really small and really hard to read right now. So what I want to do is I'm going to go up here to my style. And I'm going to choose bold, and that's going to make the letters more bold. And then we unlock the square. We are also going to unlock our letters. This will give us the option to stretch them down and to stretch them out so that they fit on our board better and fill up more space. And you can always change your line spacing on this too if you want to. Um, as you lay it on your board, you can change that on your own as well. Um, I think this looks pretty gosh darn adorable. So now the next thing that we have to do is I'm going to select both of these items and all I have to do is just draw a box around both of them and we're going to attach them. 
you'll see that it changed the color of our font to the color of our board. That's okay, not worried about it at all. That's what we want it to do because we need to make sure that we resize our template so that our letters are gonna be the correct size. So go up here and to height, just change it to 60 and it's gonna change that to the five and a half. And what that does is you'll see now your letters are just as big as you're gonna need them to be in order to do your project. I really like that. I think it's the easiest way to do these big boards. That way you're not having to try to measure each letter. You can see what it's gonna look like and how much space you're gonna have. And then you can play with it later. Like if I wanted to come over here and detach again and resize my word, I can do that. If I don't like the way that it's sitting when it's once it's big and I can see it a little bit better and I wanna make the word a little wider or longer, I can absolutely 100% do that. Now I am gonna change my letter spacing because I want to see, or my line spacing, I wanna see if I can make it look a little bit um, fatter, the letters. So I'm just gonna change my letter spacing down like a bunch. Letter spacing is way different than line spacing. It takes a lot more clicking to get your letters to actually get closer together. I don't know why that is, it's just what it does. So there's our thankful, and you can see how much space that left me at the end. So I just wanna spread them out a little bit more and just see if I can make these look a little fatter and a little wider. And I'm gonna move these back to this side. This is where you guys are just gonna kind of play around with your letters and your spacing and your sizing because you don't want your F or your K or, you know, some of your letters are gonna look a little bit weird if you stretch them too far out. I think we're looking pretty gosh darn good on these. I don't think they look super stretched out, but look at all the space we have here at the bottom. So we may need to change our font, which is, is something that you could do if you wanted to, um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and see how much bigger I can go without them looking funky. And I can probably leave a little more space at the top. It's only got about Let's see, you're looking at like one, two, three, four, five inches at the top. And you've got about, let's call it like four inches at the bottom. So if I added a little something to the top, we could probably give it another little inch or just to go. But this just gives you a good idea of what your project will look like when you're done. So we're good with this. So we're going to go ahead and remove this large template. We don't need him. He's in the way. And we are not cutting that because that would be absolute craziness. Now, I'm going to show you one thing. I'm going to ungroup these because what I want to do is double check that my letters are not enormous and are going to fit on my mat. Perfect. It's only four, or maybe five inches tall. So let's go ahead and click make it. If you guys are doing a stencil, you're going to run into this problem. See how close all these letters are? They're not leaving you any room to do your stencil word and like have ed edge pieces so that you don't stencil off of your vinyl. So you're just going to move them around. To do that, all you do is click on your letter or your image or whatever it may be and just move it around on your mat. I'm going to make sure that I have enough space between all of my letters and my edges so that I have just a little bit of overlap so when I cut out my words, I don't have to be super duper careful about not getting them, you know, over the edge. Because you can see, look at this, you would never be able to cut between those and then stencil them. It just wouldn't work. You would end up with paint everywhere. So all I do is I just move them around on my mat. And if you need to, you can flip letters to fit more, whatever you need to do. But this super simple way, it's nothing crazy. It's just an easier way to cut them and then you can, you know, have that extra edging around them. I have a lot of people who will say, oh, I didn't have any edge left and my paint bled and this is how you guys do it. We're going to cut this on some super ugly um, printed vinyl that I got in a grab box. I use my printed vinyl that I hate um, for my grab boxes for this type of stuff. It is a 651, so when you do place it, um, I do recommend um, if your wood is stained that you have placed some sort of um, poly down because you don't want it to rip up your stain. Um, I also do recommend that you don't press it too hard. You only wanna press the edges. When you peel it up, I'll show you guys, we're gonna peel it very, very carefully because we don't wanna rip up any of our wood. 
Um, I do use the 651 only because it's what I have on hand. I don't keep a lot of 631. I don't use it. And remember that 651 and 631 are Oracle brand product um, numbers. You will not see those on like a Cricut brand um, vinyl. Uh, you could do this with Aura Mask or with Cricut um, stencil vinyl. It does get a little bit expensive with the Cricut stencil vinyl. So let's go ahead, get ready to cut this out, and then we'll get it weeded and we can apply it to the sign. Here's our hideously ugly vinyl. I think it's a basketball, but I am literally never going to use it. So we're going to just use it for stencils. Like I said, this stuff, I know it's expensive, but I don't, I don't use printed vinyl. At least I haven't found a use for it that I enjoy yet. So we're going to load it. I have mine set to Paper Plus right now. It's been cutting a little deep on vinyl, I think, because it's been so humid here in my climate. So I just like to... Um, make sure that it's not going to cut, you know, too deep. And it has been with the, with the heat and the humidity. So it's going to cut this out. And instead of weeding all the big background piece, you're actually going to weed out your letters. Because for the stencil, you only need the inside. So I know you guys have seen it cut before. So we're going to let it cut. And then when we come back, I'll show you guys real quick just what you're going to weed so you don't get confused. So super quick, I just want to show you. This has the K, the U, I think the T, and the L. They're kind of hard to see, but... I just want to show you guys what you're going to actually pull off. Instead of the background on these, you're pulling off the letters. So all you have to do is just pop out the actual letter themselves. And I'm using the Cricut Weeding Tool um, to do this. And I like these because they kind of have like a, a, rigged, like a ragged edge to them. I like it because A, if you have paint bleed, it's not as obvious. And B, it's kind of a nice look for an outdoor sign. A little more rustic, but you'll see here that all we're doing is peeling off the whole letter. And I, this is the other reason I'm not a huge fan of this printable, this printed vinyl because it rips. So there is your KUTL, and I'll show you real quick so you can see like the A because that's got the center piece in it. You don't want to rip that out. So let's just pull this off. And you're going to leave the centerpiece of the A because when you do go in to put your paint on, we're going to use transfer tape to put this on to the, there it goes, to put this on to your piece of wood. So we're just going to peel all of this off and you're going to be left with just the outline. And then when you cut these, like I said, you want to kind of make sure you cut so that you have some kind of a border around your letters so that you're able to paint and not worry too, too much about any of the possible, see, this stuff rips. See what I mean? Rips. Hate. Hate this stuff. Um, that way you don't have to worry about too much you paint bleed, but this way you're going to end up being able to... have a little extra space around. Now, there, the end has these weird little things that cut out. I hate them. I get rid of them. You don't need them. I don't know why that font does it, but it does every time on the end. So, as you can see now, we have our stencils. So, we're going to get these all cut so that you have space around each letter, and then we'll apply them to the wood. My piece of walnut, and I have laid out my letters on it just to make sure that I think they're big enough, which they definitely are. So all we need to do now, and please ignore my cat, is take a piece of transfer tape, and I just use the dollar store contact paper, and I'm just going to place it on top of my T. I'm just going to start with that one. I find it easiest to, um, depending on the word, sometimes it's easier to start in the center, and then sometimes it's easier to start at the top, because this one doesn't have to be exactly centered at the top or the bottom, because I am going to um, actually have a little design at the top. I'm going to put some rope around the top. It won't matter. So you just need to get your squeegee or your um, scraper and press your design onto your transfer tape. And then it doesn't always peel like real well. I don't know how well you guys can see this, but see it's not really sticking. So sometimes you can just help it peel, especially with these bigger projects. If you can just start a corner, you can get them to stick to your transfer tape. 
The printed vinyl is a little bit harder to get to stick, and this one is just not wanting to stick. Um, it is just a, tear, a tad bit harder to get to stick to your transfer tape. So there it goes. Now it's now it's sticking. So you're just going to peel it off just like you would when you do a decal. And then you're just going to place your letter. Now a lot of people have problems with centering it and things like that. I'm pretty good at eyeballing it, but a lot of people aren't. If you are one of those people who is not, take a long level and put it on your board and make sure it's level. And then take a piece of chalk right down the center. You can wipe the chalk off when you're finished with it. And then you have a perfectly nice level line. Like I said, I just eyeball it. They don't have to be perfect for me. So when you lay your project down, make sure that you press all along the edges of your letter. Don't worry too much about this part because you're really not going to get any paint under that. But just right around the edges of your letter. And you can use your squeegee, but try not to press, you know, the whole piece down. You just want to press right around the edges. It's better for the wood if you do that. That way when you go to peel it off, after you've painted, it's less likely to pull up any of your wood. Now, like I said before, we didn't stain this one. And I didn't stain it because I thought this nice walnut color was just really pretty on its own. So all we're going to do is just go through each letter. I'm going to try to use this piece of transfer tape as much as possible. That way I don't waste any. And with the letter spacing, you can use your finger. You could use a ruler. Or you can just eyeball it. Again, I like just, I pretty much just eyeball them. Usually they're close enough for my taste, so it's not too noticeable if they're not exact. So let's get these all placed, and when we come back, I'll show you guys how to get them painted. I've placed all my letters, and I'm just going to use this patio paint. It's outdoor paint. Um, I don't even know what brand it is. I got it a while ago, but it's just white patio paint. And then a stencil brush by Martha Stewart. I recommend these over the um, sponge brushes. They hold a little bit less paint in them. And you don't want really thick paint. So all you're going to do is, I put my paint on a paper plate. It might be hard for you guys to see because it's white on white. And all I do is I just dab a little bit. And then the paint that's on there, I dab it off. And this is honestly one of the most annoying sounding crafts you will probably ever make. Because you sit here and you just tap. Don't wipe. Just tap it on. And you're just going to want to tap it all over your letter and all to the edges. And I do tend to go over my edge just a little bit just to make sure that I got all of my uh, letter covered. And all you're going to do is just do this for each and every one of your letters. Now, if you want, you can do one coat or two. Um, I always typically do one, but it just depends on the look that I'm going for. This one, because it's a darker wood, I will probably do a, a second coat, so we'll come back and show you that. But I'll just show you this on the T and the H here really quick. So we're just again going to take our paint and see there's quite a bit of paint on that. So all you do is just tap it onto your plate and then just tap it onto your letter. Again, do not wipe this on. You will end up with bleed. A lot of people end up with the paint bleed and complain about it because you've wiped instead of tapped. I think pretty much I hate doing this because it's constant tapping sound is very annoying but they look really good when you're done so it's worth it um, and you can actually go back and like as you're going tap those spots where you tapped off some of your old paint the paint that you got off your brush and then get some more paint on your brush the key to these is really honestly light layers and just taking your time and making sure that you're not putting too much paint on or wiping it on and you are just constant up and down tapping so now that I've done those two letters, I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest, and then we come back, we'll do a second coat really quick, and then we can take it off. I've gotten all my letters done, so we're going to move on to our second coat. Again, it's the same thing. I do let this dry for just a few. I don't want to dry too much, just because I want to make sure to peel the stenciling off before it dries all the way. So I let it dry in between doing all the letters, which is just plenty of dry time for it. It just needs to not be super wet. And you can see how much better the second coat covers so that you get a little bit darker um, coverage, so a little brighter white, if you will. But again, you're just gonna do the exact same thing. This is really a pretty simple, easy to do project. Hardest part really is laying down all the letters and figuring out you know, how big you need to make them. But hopefully the little um, template tool that I showed you guys and resizing 
helped you when you're making these. So let me finish up the rest of these letters and then we can go ahead and peel. I've done the second coat. Um, I like to peel while it's still kind of wet. And I also want to give you guys a quick tip on when you peel these. Peel them against the grain, not with it. If you peel with the grain occasionally, especially if you're using a stronger vinyl, it will peel off your wood grain, especially if you stained it. This one I'm not super concerned about just because it's not stained, but if you have stained your wood, and you can see these do stick pretty good, so you wanna just make sure that you peel them while it's still A, wet, and B, against the grain. And you can use your scissors and trim off some of the excess if you'd like to as you're peeling. That way you don't end up with paint on the rest of your board but I like to just sort of twist it around itself so that the paint is all on the inside. And like I said, I try to peel as much, not with the grain, as possible. There's some spots that you just can't avoid that. And there we have our beautiful stenciled letter. Now remember, these are not fully dry yet, so therefore do not touch them. Um, some of these I'm gonna have to start at the bottom because if you look like I have the A that overlaps the H, but I'm going to get all these peeled, we're going to let it dry, and then we'll embellish the top. We're going to embellish, so all I did, I just did it off camera real quick, was just added some sisal rope. Um, you can find this at Home Depot, pretty cheap. I do find it's a little bit cheaper at the um, hardware store rather than the craft store. So the next thing that we're going to do is add these shabby chic flowers. I have them in yellow and brown and in orange. These I found, uh, friends sold them to me, but you can find them on the uh, internet in a couple places. So all I'm gonna do is just kind of look and sort of play with where I wanna place my flowers. So let me just sort of play with it, and you can do them however you like. I think that's pretty cute, so we'll mess with that. And all you do, just dab a little hot melt glue on the back of the flower. And I do say be a little bit generous with it because the flower tends to absorb a little bit of it because it's got like a lacy background. And then just hold it on there and be careful because some of that glue um, may come through your lace. So you just want to make sure it's not too hot. And then you're just going to do that for each of your three flowers or whatever you're putting on. You don't have to do flowers. You could do anything you want or nothing at all. It's all up to you and your design. There's no, you know, set like I do it this way so you guys have to do it this way too. Um, this one is just the way I wanted to do it, so we're going to do it this way. And the nice thing is, these are fabric, so they can go outside. They're not paper. Um, they could go outside. This will be up probably on somebody's covered porch, so I'm not really too worried about it coming apart. So let me get you guys a little bit closer so you guys can see. I'm going to have to move the board. But you can see there are three flowers in our sisal rope, and I'll throw, show you the back. All I did was just wrap the rope and glued the ends. This end didn't have any tape on it to hold it together, so I did put some hot milk glue on that just to keep it from unraveling. I will get this all put over where you guys can see the whole project, and we'll show it to you. Guys, here's our completed project. My cat is totally going to end up being in this shot. Maybe not. But as you can see, it's 60 inches tall, so 5 feet, and about 5 and a half inches wide. Really easy to do and really fun. Now, guys, don't forget... We do have the giveaway for the $50 Amazon gift card, which I told you about at the beginning of the video. So remember, to enter, you need to subscribe to my channel, share this video, and share a comment. Comment can be, tell me about your traditions for your holidays, tell me about your favorite craft, tell me what you want to learn. Really, anything will do, just leave me a comment. You guys will have two weeks in order to enter, so it is... October 3rd, which will give us till October 17th. So make sure you enter, and the gift card will be emailed to the win winner, and I will pull the winner on October, whatever day I just said. My brain is fried. October 17th. If you guys have any questions about this or any of my other tutorials, please let me know down below. Again, Make sure you subscribe to my channel. You'll get entered to win the contest, and you'll get to find out when I post all kinds of new videos, especially if you click on that bell icon. I hope you guys had a lot of fun learning how to make this beautiful, thankful porch sign. Have a great day, guys.